One world. Radio One. Yeah, this is Ice T on behalf of the GLC. I was in that movie, New Jack City. But who gives a fuck, right? Anyway, if you're afraid of words like Drippy Willy, Front Bottom, Clunge, Wee Wee, Bacon Drapes, Sanitary Protection, Jizz, Cock Snot, Skidmark, Big Brown Skidmark, or even a Big Brown Skidmark in your mama's pants. Think about this, using your finger to taste the skid mark by pressing it onto your gums like a TV cop testing for drugs. That's right, because this is Ice T, and it's on behalf of the GLC on Radio 1, the Goldie-looking chain. I got an AK-47. I like to go out killing cops. I like to do stuff in cars that, that bounce up and down like they're some kind of disabled wagon. And I like to, my girlfriend, I like to put in a, in a bikini and put on the front of a record and, and, and like hide a gun behind her ass. You know, that's what I like to do, because I'm Ice-T. I'm kind of weird. I was in a TV show, and I wanted to be on a TV show with Gabby Rosland about hospitals, but I wasn't. Instead of doing a, a show with Gabby Rosland about hospitals, I was, I was spitting guns on people. And, yeah, Ice-T. Ice-T. Yeah, uh, I got all types of stuff. You ever see me naked before? Yeah, no, me either. That's doity, right? That's real doity. Okay, take your pants off. I'm clutching me, Cheers to all the safe parts out there. Goldie, look at chain. My name's Zane. I'm Eggman. Yeah. Egg. We got loads of stuff coming up in the show tonight. We got uh, Don Teal. Yeah, he's a specialist on on like old music. That's really good. That's right. We got celebrity TV deaths, which we will be doing shortly. What else we got, Eggy? We've also got our resident Agony Aunt Denise in the house, who's going to be maintaining all your emotional and physical problems. Wicked, serious. She's not my aunt, but she is in agony, so that's safe. And also, unbelievably, we found some of Jim Morrison's lost poetry. He tapes. Very rare, never heard before in the world. Yeah, he recorded them just before he topped himself in Paris. Well, I don't know if he recorded them, like, the moment before he died, but it was before he died because he was still alive. That's why he recorded them. Wicked. In it. Adam, come say hello. All right! Adam, said, go, go away again. I don't like your face. You may bleed from the eyes, you may cry from the anus. Who cares? Yo, always in the deep with the... Say this, man. So, celebrity TV deaths. You can phone, you can text. The number to text is 81199. And the phone number is... 0870-100-100. Do you read me over? You could call it a quiz. You could just call it a bit of fun. Anyway, serious. Check this out. All right, this is a life, eh? Just me and my slightly deformed old oh, divine new wife. Yeah, whatever. Have you got any fags? No, but look what I've got for you. I performed a minor act of vandalism to demonstrate my affection for you. Oh, that's good. God, you really are a fat turd, aren't ya? What are you talking about, my dear? Your initials are carved so intricately on this dead tree. Isn't it nice? To tell the truth, I think it's shit. What do you mean? Oh, I could be losing my footing on this side. That's what I'm standing on. Imagine if I was to fall and smash my head on... Uh, oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> Dead? Oh, are you dead? Jack! Just sod off and die, you fat twat! Celebrity TV deaths. What it is, it's like someone has died on TV and had a celebrity, and you've got to guess which one it is and what show. So, 81199, serious clad, get on it. Ring up 0800 100 100. Remember, think of all the TV deaths you've ever seen in your life, ever. And remember, think of them, try and match up what we've done, if and you win a prize. The thing is, if you don't know, It doesn't matter. Don't get upset. Like, you could win a candlelit donor for two in Best Kebabs in Newport. Serious, man! Wicked! Take your pants off! Look in! Change! Remove the dirt with some moist paper! Wicked! Make sure you don't stink. In it. Jesus built my car. It's a love affair. Mainly Jesus and my hot rod. Here we go, serious. It's Goldie Looking Chain on Radio One. Going straight over to Teal Towers. This is Don Teal. Check it out. <laughs> Don Teal. Welcome once again to Teal Towers. I'm Don Teal. Don Teal, Don Teal, Don Teal. 
with me this week in session, now goth post industrialist techno funksters, pink ice cream of my mother's skirt. The band cites influences ranging from whispering sunshade dildo and white glove dreamscape to the liberation movement, and my personal favourite, New Wave Jam Factory, who didn't exist. The original lineup consisted of Larry the Larynx Wilkinson, Tony the Bass Enforcer, aka Gavin Freeman, and Pig Farmer Rich. Available as a limited pressing on Dental Records, I managed to pick up two copies at a car boot sale last summer. So, here it is, pink ice cream up my mother's skirt with Ode to Rotterdam Termination Sauce. <laughs> Shit, right, hang on. Wrong speed again. Right, pink ice cream. <laughs> That's for Paul, who's having an appendectomy in Leeds. Oh, crap. I must have been fixed. I met Jimi Hendrix once. I'll be back later, but now I'm off to a car boot sale to buy some more crap. <laughs> with Dr. Combs' 13-piece masturbation workout. To discover new ways to arouse your tired, flaccid member. Turn it from a useless flap of skin into a throbbing rod of iron and open a doorway into a world of sexual intrigue and pleasure. Enhance your love-making techniques threefold. I use Dr. Combs' 13-piece masturbation workout video and enhance my love-making techniques Learn how to push up the four fingers into the sightless eye. Well, I'll Dr. Cum, I'd never learn how to push my fingers into the eye. Spray seed the length of a football field, and then some. Dr. Cum taught me how to spray my seed the length of a football field. And then some. Learn how to come with Dr. Cum. Results may vary, subject to contract. Your penis and balls are at risk if you do not keep up your penis. because people, uh, you appreciate them while we're doing. So check yeah, it out. What have you got, Legs? I've been delving into the mainframe and I've seen a lovely letter that's been sent in from Matt in Blue Vein. Serious? Tell us he's having a great time and he sent us the recipe for a lovely meal you could make if you were a student on a bit of scum with no money. It's a potato bake. I tried it. It is delicious. It is, it is absolutely simply divine and you can learn how to make it if you visit our website because you know what? Mmm, that really is lovely. So that's safe. Cheers for them letters. We also had one from Teddy Balls. He's written in. He said he's gone absolutely bonkers. He's losing his mind and he's now in a home. And he'd like to say thanks because he's been taping a show, listening to it over and over again until blood has come out of his eyes and nose. So thanks for that, Teddy. He's really obviously dedicated. And there's another dedicated listener here. It's a Tony Anus from Abersucken who's a deputy manager of a supermarket. He loves the show and he's been spending a lot of time listening to it because he's alone after his wife and three kids left him. Tony started drinking and he wasn't able to keep up on the mortgage repayments. He managed to lose the house. Things weren't looking so good. In fact, things were looking down. So Tony decided to go to a festival last summer to get a grip on single life. Well, he certainly did. He ended up kissing a man and finding his true calling as a homosexual. Things were looking good for Tony as he accepted his role in life. 
He found a lover on the internet and this man lived in America. After a, a lot of thought, Tony decided he could make the move over to accept his new role in life. When he arrived at the airport after many months of saving money, he discovered a terrible secret that his lover had kept away from him, the fact that he had no legs. It broke Tony's heart, basically, caused a lot of strain, but he knew if they worked together, they could work their way through it, and together they did and became closer. Eventually, they decided to adopt a child, and Tony now works for a prosthetic limb firm making rubber arms and legs, whilst Ray Allen, his husband, spends his days looking after a beautiful 12-year-old boy adopted from the local orphanage, who is, as we speak, carving his father some lovely legs for Father's Day. Serious, Clad, you knows it and stuff. It's the Goldie, Goldie looking chain. It's not a Chinese restaurant. It's me and Love Eggs. We're specialists in a special type of entertainment. And tonight we're going to we form that entertainment on you. What it is, Eggy was looking around in his attic because uh, his mother was very involved in the... Uh, attic Society of Great Britain. In 1963. And uh, they found some interesting boxes with tapes in them. What was in them, Eggy? Those were very special tapes. They belonged to Dead Bloke and former member of The Doors, Jim Morrison. So these have never been heard on public radio ever before and probably never heard again. So check this out. This is rare as fuck, in it? Fucking amazing. I'm Jim Morrison. These are my last tapes. Me and my mother and father and grandmother and grandfather were riding through the desert when we came across a truckload of Indians scattered on the highway. I smoked a cigarette and took a leak as I looked across the horizon. I saw the devils. Smashing myself open, I looked inside to find what I could only find to be the sound of the Indian on the highway. Only as himself would he realize, without God on your side, can you be a citizen? Feeling the inner demons touching myself inside, behold the ancient shaman. The curse was lifted. Where in the world? Where? PC World. I'm Jim Morrison. Sure, and I'm Ray Manzarek. Shut up, Ray! I hate you, Ray! You're an asshole, Jim. No one likes you, Jim. You had to go and ruin it for everyone! Jim with gay poetry. I was going on about I wish you were fucking dead. Indians, Jim. No one wants to hear that Indian shit, Jim. Ruined you're like it, you a asshole. fucking woman. Look at your hair, Jim. Why don't you just fuck off, Jim? I'm going Robbie home said now. you're a girl. To form knob with a terrible thing that's gone wrong with it, and all pus is coming out, and it's it's in a car, and it's bouncing off your face because you're going over loads of bricks, and it's an infected knob, and it's making you go blind because all the pus is going in your eyes, and then you get the infection, and then you make someone give you a blowy in a nightclub. That's what Radio One's all about. Ah, fuck off! Back. We're safe and we've got. Shut up, there. Who said that? Is that you? Stop talking. Cheers. Here we are. We're back. It's, uh, it's me and John. Safe. All right. Cheers. In the studio now, we've got two members of the Goldie Looking Chain, Adam Hussein and Billy Webb. Serious. Oh, right. Stop doing the clapping. Shut up. I like clapping. Shut up. Seriously. Now they're going to tell us what's on TV tomorrow night. Billy, Adam, what have you got? Wicked, right? First up uh, on at 8 o'clock, right? We've got Fist and Water Sports. It's a new crime programme on Channel 4 to be mismatched detective duo Tony Fisting and Mad in Water Sports. Tonight's episode involves a corpse and a local canal. Up on ITV at 9 o'clock, Jeremy Beadle's World of Hands. Tonight, Jeremy's in Eastern Europe trying to find yet another match for his slightly withered yet charming hand. Yeah, she is. All right, later on at 10 o'clock, we got tonight's big movie, da -da -da -da, Priest Academy 2 Mission to Mass. This hilarious Rob Front make us a Priest Academy sees one of our heroes returning back to Priest Academy in order to learn the true meaning of chastity. Over the witching hour at midnight, we got a documentary reconstructing people's holiday nightmares involving electrical injuries to the genital and rectal areas. And that's called Holiday, I Didn't Know Electricity Was Involved. Serious, cheers for that, boys. And don't forget... Shut up. Don't forget, right? No, shut up. Oh. No, shut up. Oh. Or leave. Oh. No, serious. Oh. Shut up or leave. Oh. No, I, Adam. I never knew. Please, will somebody no, say something? Sh Adam, no. take yourself outside. No, no. Are you outside? No, fuck off. Have a word with no, yourself. No. What, what word would you have with yourself? 
Quiet. Handbag. Quiet word. Yeah, uh, quiet word, man. Yeah, what? No, one, one word. One word. You gotta have one word for yourself. What word's that? Handbag. Uh. You would have a handbag. Oh, what you have what? With one handbag. word. You have a word yourself. One word. What word. would it be? Word. Word. You'd have word. No. You would have a handbag, Adam. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> you would have a handbag. There's nothing there. There's nothing in it. You can't even think of one word. One word. Shit. So you'd have that word with yourself. Yeah. You take yourself outside yeah, and you'd right, have, have the shit. word shit with yourself. Yeah. Shit. Right, you're right. outside now. Yeah. Have that word with yourself. <laughs> have you said? Have you had yeah. that word? Yeah. Right, come back in the room. Come back oh, in. Do your trousers. You're yeah. back in the room. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Right. All right. Leave it there. Okay. Anyway, cheers for that, boys. And don't forget, the phone lines are still open if you want to enter our TV celebrity death quiz, celebrity TV death. You've seen the, you've all seen the colours before. Have you seen the colours? I've sniffed the petrol until I saw the colours. Mr. Gold, you've been up to bar. I'm looking for mushrooms. Many colours. Serious, you've seen the colours. It's a goldy looking chain. That's right, Radio One. Okay, welcome back to the flow. I've just put my pants back on because I dirtied myself. I've cleaned myself up, so now I'm going to go over to the quiz, which, as you know, is Celebrity TV Deaths, and we're going to see if any of you stupid pieces of scum have got any idea what tonight's quiz is. Let's hope you don't die in a car crash. We've had a few responses already. Eggy, yeah, do you just want to tell us some of them? Yes, I do. Henry Fingerbottom from Exeter, he's called asking, was it Todd from Neighbours getting hit by a car? Sadly, the answer was no. That is sad. Very sad indeed. Yeah, we've had Simon Cheese Helmet. He asks, was it Tiffany from EastEnders being run over by Frank in Albert Square? Sorry, no, wrong again. Bad luck. Uh, we've also got uh, Terry Sexfelt from Ipswich, and he says, was it his maths teacher dying in front of him when he was 11? Well, Terry, it wasn't, no. The lines are still open. The text is 81199. This is Radio 1. You knows it, Eggy. It's all made of Play-Doh. It's all made of Close the door. It's a goalie looking chain, Radio 1. All right, all right, you had a lot of fun so far. Say it is. We're about to enhance that with tonight's band in session. That's right, we got a band in session tonight, very important, seminal. Seminal, super seminal, like the fluid. Our band in session tonight in the live cabinet is Smoking Joe Moses. Seriously, yeah, Smoking Joe was first in Fox System with Johnny Lee Hooker in 62. Then he joined The Fox, who split in 64. Then he had a brief stint in Napalm Fuck, before Cannonball Adderley kicked him out for shagging his sister. But he was also uh, heavily involved in a Quincy Jones side project, uh, Sex Fuck, who later became the Fuck Worms, who were formed in 87 as the Nice Flowers. So we'd like to welcome one of the most influential men in R&B and the blues movement to the live cabinet, Smoking Joe Moses! Okay, stop the clapping. Okay, get a grip. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. Yeah, what time, okay? So, Smoking Joe, I believe that you've smoked over 400 cigarettes in one night in a gig at a Worthington Hammersmith Academy in 1968. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Now, I believe, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, you've toured the U.S., for the last 70 years. Now, is this your first time in the UK, Joe? No, I spent some time at a coming of age festival for teenage boys in Wrexham. Well, I, I guess I shouldn't mention that. Uh, pr probably not. You're obviously influenced by a lot of different bands and musical genres. Tell me, which one really kickstarted it for you? Uh, 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 yeah, I <laughs> Michael Jackson. Okay, serious. Nice one. Hey, mate, can I get another ashtray in here? This one's full. Adam, take take him in this ashtray spot. Uh, all, right, all right, Get him a lovely tray. Right. Got it? Has yeah. he got it? Yeah. Anyway, so, Joe, what audio device are you unleashing on us in your lovely live cabinet tonight? Oh, I don't want to hear what's on my name. Yeah, I'm going to play a song. It's called The White Cotton Panty Lose. One, two, three, four. Hey, pretty baby, don't want no song. Hey, baby, baby, there ain't nothing wrong. Oh, listen to me, sing my song. Yeah, baby, put them on. It's gotta be cotton, not nylon. White kind of panties, baby. I got the white kind of panty blues. She bends over, and I see her pursuit. Yeah, she's a baby. Yeah, smoking motherfucking Joe Moses. One time, boys. 
Joe, Joe, um, it's this is also gone a bit quiet in there. It's right? gone very quiet in there. Is he all right in there? He seems to be face down, and I think there's blood. Oh, sh you shit! Anyway, he was a prick, and I didn't like his face. Anyway, it seems we've just managed to sadly kill one of the founding fathers of R and B music as we know it today. But anyway, as the Russian authority said about the cursed disaster, shit anyway. So, oh, Eggy, where's where's Adam gone? He's skinning up a jazz in the box. Can we play? Can we play him? We can have jazz can in here. We can. Hang oh, on. Where's my skin? Let's get some of these together. In the meantime, you build one up, and I just like to say a quick announcement. If you are Felicity Kendall, or you're that bird who's fifth from the pub last night, or that Swedish bird who took photos of us a few weeks ago, email us with the details of yourself, and if possible, a photo of your genital. I've never heard anything so fucking shit in all my life, and I've heard a lot of shit. This is fucking crap. I'd rather be fucking kneecap than listen to this shit anymore. Turn it off. Read a fucking letter to Glenn Hoddle, the leader of the BBC, or whatever he's fucking called. Because it's shite. Fuck you. And fuck Glenn Hoddle for making you put this shit on the radio. You're all fucking shite. Now I'm off to hold a BMX above my head. Why, you might ask? Because I'm holding a rally. Now fuck off. Right. You worn out your genitals through overexertion? Have you become upset recently? Well, there's somebody here tonight, isn't there, Zane? That's right. If you've got problems and no one else can help and you need someone to turn to, check this out. Denise. Our resident agony Anne. She's safe as fuck. She's going to sort you right out. She it is. And she's got a mild yeast infection. Right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Denise and I'm here tonight as part of, uh, uh, well, I've been asked by the fellas to come down and help counsel people what need help emotionally or perhaps physically in some cases. Uh, I deal with a lot of problems and I deal with a lot of angst in my life. So we're going to go to the lines, open them up and see who's there tonight and what we can do for them. So, hello, who's on the line please, Pat? Hello, is that Denise? It, it's Janet here. It's about my husband who gets very upset. He, he doesn't like it when the indoors come to stay, you see. Okay. Right. I, I, I don't really want to upset my husband, but it, it's almost as though it's a, it's a them or him situation. Right. I see what you're saying, Pat. Yes. And you sound like you're having a terrible time really terrible. with your husband at the moment. Have you got any pus? I, I, I don't quite understand that. Did, did you say pus, Denise? Pus? That's right, yes, you know. St uh, sort of sticky yellow discharge. discharge. Sort of like a residue, that sort of thing, around the eye or the mouth. It might stink. Uh, uh, have you got any? Have you I, got any pus? I, I, it's not really about the pus. It, it's about my husband, you see? No, I don't think it is, is it? No, this I, is something, right, we need to talk about. Because I don't think you should be using your husband as this mask. Right, or this cry for help, this pathetic cry for help, you know. Well, Have you got a puss issue, Pat? I, I, I don't think, think about really it. About no, listen, to right. Well think, right? Well, have you got any places I, on your body that might be infected? Myself. Yes, I think I you have, haven't you, right? And where have you been doing with these problems? What have you been doing? You've been hiding them, I'm haven't you? Right? Okay? Right? You just tell us, no, stop, you've got a puss issue, and you're too scared to tell people, you're too scared to tell your own family that you've got some sort of infection in between your flaming legs, right? You probably stink, you haven't cleaned it up for ages, you've got a puss issue. Get out of me face, just get out! Because you make me sick, you're off! You're off the phone! Get out, you're sick, you make me sick. <sighs> right. Line two. Who's on the line, please? It's, it's Terry. Right, okay. Terry. Hurry up, pet. I haven't got all day for people like you. Tell us what your problem is. Uh, I've been feeling a bit down recently, you know. It's... Oh, I saw again too much. Sorry, I didn't hear that, Pet. I was just replacing my tenor lady. I've had a bit of heavy leakage. Uh, it's flush now, though. Carry on. Say what you've got to say. I just can't cope, you know. I can't find anyone to turn to. I, I, I think I'm on top of myself. Hang on. Hang on, Pet. That's all a bit doomy-gloomy for us, isn't it, right? Have you not got 
a nice juicy girlfriend problem, right, or some sort of financial worry you could tell us about, pet? I haven't got anything. I just want it all to stop. I just want to go into space. Now, hang on, hang on. That's not very nice, is it, right? People don't want to hear that on the radio, you know? I think, I think you know, and I know, you're wasting both our times, right? Because what are you doing? Nothing, right? You're just a waste of skin. You're just a bag of blood waiting to be washed down the drain, right? You're just a horrible little bit of meat. Right, have you got any pus? No. Right, don't make me sick. I'm cutting you off, you dirty waste. Let's get back to work on some issues tonight. Who's the next caller? Yeah, hello, it's Peter, yeah. Hiya, Peter. Now, you're calling from a secret location, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. I'm in a bit of a quandary, like. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, you know, you know, it's my next-door neighbour. He keeps lots of animals, you know, like uh, birds, parakeets and emus and all. Well, they're making a lot of strange noises, you know, like... Wah! Oh! Ah! Ah! Doosh! 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 Ah! You know, noises like that. So, what you think is he might be abusing these animals? Yes, yeah, possible. Okay. Like. Right. I've, I've been thinking about this. I'm, I've been looking at it. I think I found your problem. I've got to ask you a few questions, though. Right. This neighbour, has he got a girlfriend? Uh, I, I think he's married, like. Right, OK. What about you, Pet? Have you got a girlfriend? No, I'm single at the moment, like. Right, OK. So, what do you do with your spare time, then, Pat? Well, just hang out with me mates, like. Right, OK. So, you spend a lot of time in male company? Well, yeah. So? So, essentially you say, you like, hang it out, drinking with men? I might. Right, okay. So you might say, just for instance, right, you might say, invite one of your men friends home for an after-hours drink, like? I, I don't understand. It's the animals. Don't worry about them, pet, right? Let's get back to you, okay? So you like, hanging out with men, right? Yeah. You like, going out, drinking with men, right? And you like, inviting men back to your house, right? Uh, I think you care, pet. Okay? No, no, I think I'm what you've got to do is take a step back, about, okay? Like, right? And have a good look sack, at yourself in the mirror, sack. right? No, oh, listen to me, you. right? Oh, listen to what I'm saying, no, right? No, I think you've yeah. got to put your red shoes on Don't and your little you tight pink t-shirt. No, no, right? I think you're gay, aren't you? And you're not dealing with it properly, right? Get out! You're a waste of skin, okay? Out! Out! Well, remember, folks, a problem shared is a problem partially solved by myself and some tenor lady. So tune in next week for more problems. Why I, you bastards. <laughs> People seeing it from Newport and copying our leisure way. He me swear. Fuck. My balls is my name. People seeing it from Newport because they want to be the same as us. We're in Cabaret, Pringle. Have you ever had a fucking fight down the dingle? Or heard of the youth firm? Or Anthony Molden? She says you're from Newport, but I know you're from Bolton. She says you're from Newport, but take my advice. I know you've only ever been to Zanzi's twice. I don't care if you're from Swindon or if you're a bender. Gotta keep it real. Don't be a pretender. To the people over here, to the people over there. I'm safe as two cans of lager and I got umbro leisure wear. Don't stare, or you'll read these nights like there's O'Connor. Fucking Melanie sides, bang bang like bullets. From Manusi, I'm being fisted to death by no more up on the jacuzzi. We're gonna put you to the test Taking pot shots at your moat And you boss like the Wild West The chance you take Give me the money I lent You can't escape bleeding to death They tied the quent It's like spiking your mother's lager With a gram of beast Or being abducted and raped By aliens from outer space Turn up the speaker's brand Till they start to distort With a goldy looking chain Straight out to Newport <laughs> And we're born and raised And we're born and raised And we're born and raised In Newport City That's where I was born Rocking the party with a tape of dog porn Spin with decks Check the microphones like throwing the stongs Like we was Tom Jones But we're not With a goldy looking chain Safe like Windsor Davis And never the twain This is the town Newport's the city Wanked off with two slags On the number nine to Spitty You know what man? I'm sick of people fuck I'm saving it for the fall I'm in this fucking north It's your fault, Spitty So my way from the high Just try to fucking keep it real No music, class Step up, run up, get up What's up, sucker? Took half a gram of bass And 23 punkers People saying They're from the MPT Just cause they want to be in the GLC 
popping these pills, get the fuck in my face When I robs a house, I never leaves a trace Coming straight at a new bot, it's a goldy looking chain Motherfucker, we're about to put some salt in your game to the people over here, to the people over there. Ah! No, no, hang on, serious, serious. Go. Take the clamp off the end first. It's, no, wicked. We're going back straight back to Teal Towers. This is Don Teal. Uh, he's good. He's our resident old record expert. He's a bit of a weird git. Um, we saw him touch himself in a service station once. Let's take a trip down memory lane with our old buddy, Don Teal. Serious, you knows it. Check it out. <laughs> Don Teal. Right, welcome back. I thought tonight I'd try to treat you to what's possibly the most influential rock song since Electric Skidmark's Jesus Hurt My Child. Tonight's featured artist, a New Jersey-based Sex Avery, with the Tracy Brothers, Jack and Dan on guitar, and a fresh-faced Martin Nookis on percussion. The band demonstrated their angst-driven emotive rock to its full capability here with a title track from their 1969 seminal album, Be The Man. Imagine what it would be like to cut your bell end off with a piece of glass. <laughs> Shit. Right. Never works properly. Right. Be The Man. I've been the band had to split in 1970 after a bad case of worms during the Mexican leg of the USA tour, which literally tore the band to shreds. Dan Tracy went on to become one half of thrash metal band Cum Eater, whilst brother Jack joined pro Vietnam outfit Bag of Meat. Oh, my wife's just bought some cakes, you know. I must apologise. Marty Nutkiss, on the other hand, served 12 years for murder and was electrocuted after a failed prison break in 1982. As a young man in San Francisco, that song really changed my life. Serious, we're back. I'm Dwayne Zane. This is Mr. Love Eggs. Eggy Eggman. Something like that. Serious. Earlier on, we asked you a question. We did like a poser thing. It was like a... A quiz of sorts? A, it was like a quiz of sorts, innit? Celebrity TV deaths. Basically, you had to think about celebrity TV deaths, innit? All the TV you've ever seen in your life, ever, and all the times you've seen people die, and then match it to the quiz. Basically, what we've done is we played you this. Alright, this is a life, eh? Just me and my slightly deformed all old divine new wife. Yeah, whatever. Have you got any fags? No, but look what I got for you. I performed the minor act of vandalism to demonstrate my affection for you. Oh, that's good. God, you really are a fat turd, aren't ya? What are you talking about, my dear? Your initials are carved so intricately on this dead tree, isn't it nice? To tell the truth, I think it's shit. What do you mean? 
oh, I could be losing my footing on this soft earth what I'm standing on. Imagine if I was to fall and smash my head on. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Jack! Just sod off and die, you fat twat! So you had to guess which famous celebrity TV deaf Va was. We got some callers on the line. Who we got? Line line one, is it? Hello? Hello? Uh, hello, mate. Uh, what's your name and where'd you come from, son? Hi! My name's Dave and I'm from Cornwall! And I, Dave. Hi! You sound like a weirdo. What's the answer? Ah, uh, is it Tommy Cooper and in the Palladium, like? No, that's rub that's a rubbish answer. That's rubbish. It sounds oh. like you. I think that's absolute rubbish. Yeah, now you're go away. away. You're a waste of blood. Listen, have we got anyone serious on the lines? Can we have look, caller two, please? Hey, yo, how we feeling? It's Bruce Leroy. I like that. Uh, have you got any idea what it is, Leroy? What it was, man. Bobby from home and away dying on a tragic bus accident. Uh, I think you'll find that she actually died in a tragic boating accident there, uh, Leroy. Accident. Okay. Well, yeah. I must have had it wrong. Yeah, well, ch cheers for calling anyway. Sorry to waste your time, Nice man. one, Spy. You know you're safe. We got one more to go. Serious. Who's on the line, then? All right, all right, lads. It's Andre here yeah, from Manchester. All right, Andre. Now, have you got an answer for today's celebrity TV death competition? Yeah, I think I think I know. I, I think it were that Janine. I think she she killed that fat lad, Barry, in the, in the you know, your EastEnders. Serious, man. You got it right, Wiggy. That's right. Well done, Andre. What was the answer, Lectus? The answer was Janine from EastEnders killing that fat cunt Barry from EastEnders in the TV show EastEnders. That's right, you knows it. You've won yourself a candlelit donna for two in Newport at Best Kebabs. How do you feel about that, Spar? Yeah, that's dead uh, boss, That's man. wicked. Yo. You knows it. It's a goldy looking chain. Thanks for having us on Radio 1. I love you all, and I want to give you a big kiss on the bottom. Serious. Thank you. Mr. Love Eggs there. I'm Dwayne Zane. Say wicked! <laughs> You know it, thanks for having us. Hope you haven't said that too much. You know it, Cody looking fucking insane. Most serious, the trick. Wicked.